I'm bald and have a beard. I don't have anything to reveal. Um, I, uh, let's be honest, I spend like seven days a week in Akron, and as I, like, I, I don't have a car, so I walk a lot, and I always see these signs that say, keep Akron beautiful. And it's a simple sentence, right? It's, it's three, three words, you know, keep Akron beautiful, but it still stymies me, because it's that, that first word, keep? I don't want to be down in Akron, but I've never looked at Akron and been like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? It's just, it's not aesthetically pleasing, but, uh, but it's, it's got good heart. And, and as any ugly person will tell you, it's what's on inside that counts. I've, uh, you're only offended by that if you're ugly. Don't make noise. Yeah, oh, it says an ugly person, I assume. Anyway. No, so, uh, but I've, I've actually lived in, like, ugly places that are ugly outside and in. Yeah. And, uh, like, I lived in San Bernardino about a decade ago, and it used to be that nobody knew where San Bernardino was, and I'd have to say, oh, it's about 50 miles east of L.A. on the 10. And they'd say, the 10? I'd be like, that's what they call Interstate 10 out there, just go with it. And they're like, okay. And then there was a, a terrorist attack there. People knew where it was, they didn't have to ask. Instead, my friends would ask me like, oh wow, did you know where that was? And I'd say, yeah, it was like a couple miles from my house. I'd go by there every day. They'd be like, oh man, that must freak you out. I'm like, nope, this is a terrible place where terrible things happen. If anything, I'm more set in my opinion of that place than ever before. Uh, see, I lived alone in a tiny two bedroom house. And uh, I didn't find out until after I moved in, but it, used to be a crack house. So occasionally you just get random knocks on the door. It was, a, it was an exciting place. I lived about a mile outside of like downtown proper. You know, it's a northwest side. So think like West Hill. Like, uh, so it was like it was close to downtown, but like far enough away from downtown that people have yards and inexplicably everybody had a pet rooster. I don't know. It's like the city too, so it never gets dark, so they just be like 3 a.m. You just be like, I don't, why do you even have that? Cockfights probably, because they're not laying eggs. Huh. It, was a, it was a really terrible place. I don't know if any of you have been to Southern California, but they have this problem uh, with graffiti. So if you're driving down the 10, the 10, remember everyone, if you're driving down the 10, you might realize that there's razor wire around the exit signs, because if there weren't, people would tag the exit signs. It's bad. Wow. I lived surrounded by commercial property. I don't know if any of you have ever played Sim City, but that's stupid, because I was a residential plot, which means that after 6 p.m., everyone was gone, and I was just alone by myself getting four stations over the air on like a crappy antenna, surrounded by nothingness in an old crack house. <laughs> and there was one thing that would come around. There was a tiny gray cat. I never named the cat because I was so depressed that it just didn't even come to me. But there was a tiny gray Siamese cat with, with matted fur that was missing an eye. And that cat really just exemplifies the whole neighborhood to me. And, and like any good person, like I, it was all the more painful because if I stepped out of my front patio, I could see the San Bernardino Mountains. And if you want to do this with me, if you put your hand up at arm's length distance from the thumb to the pinky, like that's how high they rose above to the horizon. Like they weren't, they weren't small. It was just like out there in this distance. But I was, I was stuck with my one-eyed cat that didn't have a name in a neighborhood that I was surrounded by businesses in, and I was lonely. And it really drags on you. And I only knew one person, and you lived like 30 miles away, and we barely saw each other. And, and around Christmas, my parents, who were living in Massachusetts, they figured they'd send me a, a care package to cheer me up. And I said, I live in a bad neighborhood. Can they hold it at the post office so I could go down and pick it up. And they're like, yeah. So Christmas is coming up and you know, I get the slip and it says, we're holding your package. I'm like, that's great. And it was a nice day, because I mean, it's a crappy place, but it's still Southern California. And I was like, hey, 
I will walk the mile to the post office, and I will just enjoy this beautiful day. And I'm like, 50 feet down the street, and I'm already realizing maybe it's not that beautiful because it's a bad neighborhood. Everyone has dogs, but they're outside dogs, and they have chained in fences, and the dogs will just run up and bark at you. It's a dog that's never known love, and that too just exemplifies the neighborhood. But I got, I got past all the barking dogs. I got down to the post office. Um, and it's, you know, it's like one of those like government buildings. So it's like it's made out of stone. And it's kind of like up a little incline, and and next to the stone stairs, there's there's a lawn, and it goes up. And just on the lawn was a guy just passed out. And I was like, oh man, I hope he's okay. And then I was like, I hope my mom sent cookies. So I go into the post office, and I'm coming back out. And he's still there, and I'm like, oh man. I hope he's okay. So I inched up. I looked at him. And I just thought, okay, he's breathing. He's fine. And I, I kept walking. And it was about a mile. And like while you're walking, carrying a box, walking a mile, like you could think you're like, that was a real shitty thing to do. And it's like I did the like you could say, like someone said, like, well, you did the least possible, but I did the third, I, I, did, I did the third least. I, I put forward the third least effort. The least thing you could do always is nothing. That is, that is the least. So like if you show up somewhere and someone's like, well, that's the least I could do, nah, that's the second least thing. Now in this scenario, I also didn't do the second, the, the thing that required the second least amount of effort because that would just be like walking by and being like, thoughts and prayers, and then just keep walking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, I did, I went one step beyond thoughts and prayers. I'm like, well, he's vaguely alive and just kept walking, you know. But I felt bad about that because I didn't ask if he was okay. You know, I just assumed. And I, I kind of like, by the time I got home, I was like, you know, like next time I'm in a scenario like that, I actually am going to check on the person. And every time since I have, and there's been a lot of passed out people that, you know, I check on and I've, I've called the ambulances, and you know, there was just a guy throwing up in an alley once, and I was like, are you okay? And he's like, I'm fine. And I was like, are you sure? And he's like, just, I'm fine. I'm like, he got annoyed. He's, he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this last summer, I was out in Arizona, and uh, staying up in Flagstaff for most of the week, but my, my flight left out of Phoenix. So, so my friend and I went down the night before and got a hotel in Tempe, which is a suburb of Phoenix. And I had been temp in Tempe for like, you know, almost a decade, and, and she just wanted to crash out. And I was like, no, I need to go out. And like, so I just went out for a three hour walk. I just like seeing what happened, you know, like a lot of new buildings went up, there's new lights, like they have solar panels on everything. And I was just like, Wow, and then I'm getting back to the hotel, and, and there's like a there's a bus stop out in front of the hotel, and I'm, I'm going in, and there's a there's a couple having a fight, and it's like it's a it's not really physical, but they're yelling, and then he pushed her down on the bus stop bench, and he's yelling at her, and I'm kind of like I'm doing the thing where I'm walking towards the hotel, but I'm like. Oh no, oh no. So I start walking up, not really knowing what I'm doing, but I'm like, uh, and this was before the whole Me Too thing, but still I'm like, this isn't good. I'm like, I get about 30 feet away, and I was just, I say, is everything okay? It's like, it's not a question. It's not, like I, it sounds like it's supposed to be a question, but there's no question mark at the end of that. You're like, is everything okay? It's sort of like, what's going on? And of course they, they answered and they didn't answer truthfully because the guy's like, everything's fine. And she looked over and she was like, it's okay. And I was like, but I wasn't looking for truthful answers because I wasn't asking a question. It was just like a vocal way of saying, hey. <laughs> and I, uh, and then I, I didn't believe him, because it wasn't believable. Kind of like stood around for a little bit. Like I'm walking slowly backwards, but I'm still without doing this thing. And, uh, and like she gets up, and they're still arguing. She just runs to her car. He 
follows her, and she gets in and drives away. And he looks at me, and I quickly duck into the hotel. <laughs> I took the steps up to the second floor, because I didn't know what was going on. And I was like, okay, I guess I did the right thing. I mean, who knows what happened the next day. But, you know, it's like one of those things where you're just like, I mean, I guess it's a good idea to do the right thing. And, and when I see those signs around Akron, and it says, like, keep Akron beautiful, I don't think, like, I don't take it to mean don't litter. I think it just means, like, treat other people like human beings. Yeah. Because what? that way it's yeah. pretty on the inside. Yeah. And, like, we can worry up the, about those boarded up storefronts later, but maybe if we're all just nice to each other, we can keep Akron beautiful. Yeah.